Adams gym does that better than any other gym that I've seen. I'm not saying there's not other gyms out there like it, but I've just gone to a decent amount of gyms to understand that like Adam's gym, super special. And honestly, my, my gym back home, uh, Fulcrum fitness. Like I think just those two gyms. Also, we can't forget Squamish barbell ran by, uh, Jesse Buffano have embraced community better than a lot of the gyms that I've been to. And I, I know there's other gyms out there with great communities and I've seen them and it's freaking awesome, but I'm biased too. Cause they're my home gyms. Well, everyone's home gym is the best, I but think like, that's, yeah, it's, that, it's really cool. The, the things that you're biased for, or the, the reasons it feels that way are specific. And rather than say like, this is the best gym in the world. It's more like, this is my favorite or I really enjoy this place. And that community is one that fits. So you said that earlier when we were talking, like everybody kind of has that, how you find like your people yeah and it's for different things different reasons but everybody has like their group of people and it's yeah. dope when you know gene gyms different gyms kind of align with like who you feel you are as an individual and I, it was man crossfit for vancouver i think i won't say oh they do a better job than other gyms just what they're doing is extremely unique to them and their people yeah and i think, yeah, that's I think like they the really gym. they really found like not their audience, but like th their community and like they, they, they're tailored towards the people in that area, what people like doing. I mean, even for programming and workouts, I mean, obviously CrossFit, you're trying to be well-rounded, but like you also tailor to the group of people that you're with. I mean, CrossFit Fort Vancouver, there's a lot of outdoor enthusiasts. Everyone goes on hikes Dude. and stuff like that. And you go in Adam's gym and you get like a running cardio workout. <laughs> Dude, there's some freaking burners <laughs> that can put down on not, some workouts. Not only that, we did, we show up in, Wednesday, the workouts are released. Thursday, the class workout was a quarterfinals workout. Yeah. And there were 70-year-olds doing the quarterfinals workout. Yeah. It's like it, they, were, they did the workouts in quarterfinals that were – they were just class workouts. And I thought, yeah. I thought that was so dope. Yeah, like, and, like – and I think that's what's super cool is, like, I really do think that CrossFit Fort Vancouver has, like, embodied what CrossFit is because, like, CrossFit okay. is made – for anybody and everybody and they do a good job of like showing that and that's why I think the community is so well I mean obviously it started from Adam and his attitude but like everyone there understands that like hey this is the workout in the day everyone can do it yes there's like a spectrum to it but yep. like everyone's going to be hitting the workout so uh yeah no it's cool I mean there's obviously all of us there throwing down we got like caution tape around we have like our workout area <laughs> all so laid dope. out like it feels like a competition <laughs> but at the same time classes are just hitting those workouts too <laughs> so like it's uh yeah it was super cool to see and see some of the scores of people like in classes and yeah it was fun I mean we we're probably definitely hyper focused on us but like it was cool seeing all of them do it like we get there early and Adam was hitting the freaking workouts yep. you know without saying anything to yeah anybody. He's you didn't like, tell oh, anybody just jump into class yeah and we just oh what's up man throwing down and it you you know the you know a lot of Glassman quotes Glassman one of the quotes he has is like um like CrossFit CrossFit differs in um degree not type mm -hmm. yeah, I've heard so that one same kind of and um crossfit can be for anyone but it's not for everyone yeah i think that that's one of the things with crossfit for vancouver that i noticed it's like you can make it work for you and so many people there are making it work for them yeah that it's just it's so enjoyable to be around a community that's like focused on those things we're on the way to the gym I mean, it's kind of a side tangent but on, not it'll on. come full circle <laughs> oh, can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah we got you that sweater <laughs> See hey, I mean, I don't really know where we're going to start this thing, so we can probably start it here. <laughs> no, we're, we're rolling with hey, all that in, stuff. Yeah. That's I don't, a, that's bro, a, I don't know it. where to start where we were talking. It, it, Dude, I, honestly, you, just I think push point, play, baby. you can mix that. This uh, is normally how the podcast end up. We just like started talking. I was like, hey. Uh, I've been setting up still. So. <laughs> do an intro, kind of set up. Well, hey, there it is. There it is. <laughs> that's where we're starting. <laughs> I'll add an intro for you. No, I don't. I don't say that's the start. I say we play all this stuff and we'll roll in, and that'll also be in there. Yeah. I'll just do like an intro piece if you guys talk. That randomly. was like that was like the pre-podcast. Yeah, it was, yeah, you know how they do races yeah, where you got stuff. a running start. Like you don't say three, two, one, go, but you yeah. everybody's move like NASCAR. Come on, we're going two hundred miles now, baby. <laughs> we're already in it. You know yeah. that was now we're officially in <laughs> we it. Hit the ground but running. You guys all got that pre-stuff. So, anyways, um, what I was saying was is. 
Zach's a freaking goofball, but <laughs> <laughs> start with that. But we're on the way to the gym. Nate lives probably like between 15, 20 minutes away. Uh, we had to take a little bit of detour and drop Theo off with uh, my at my parents' Airbnb. So we were probably driving for like 25 minutes like mm-hmm. from Nate's by the time we got to the gym. And he's like 24 point. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, how many people do you think I can get to wave back to me by the time we get to the gym? And I was like. I was like, all right, it does not count once you get into the parking lot of the gym because, like, the vibe there is different. I was like, it's from, like, now until we get to the parking lot, you know? And I was like, two. Like, I just said two. (laughs) I mean, you got to know where you're at. I think Boise I would have picked a little bit more. Oh, you got to pick 100. Yeah, like Vancouver, Portland area, different kind of vibe than here. And so I said two. He said five. I was like, that's ambitious. Little did I know that he was going to be hanging out the window, like (laughs) waving down people. If I knew that, I might have picked a little bit more. That being said, you got five or four. four. I didn't even make five. And like one of them was the same, like two people in one car. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. one of them was someone walking on the sidewalk yep. and then one was just another person in a car. And I, and I did, I did get some peace signs, but those didn't count. Yeah. I did waves. get some head nods. I did get some, a good morning. Cause I was, yeah, I'm out the window. Like, I was like, who wouldn't wave to that? I, I was mean, waving like a man. Dude, that's just like, it's like cool when you do like random acts of kindness <laughs> and like, you can see people just be like. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> that's what's awesome about it, you know. Like yeah. just doing like something small, like waving at somebody. I could really make someone else's day awesome. Yeah, and like I remember, I was telling you, like I got gas, and the lady like genuinely asked me like how oh, my day yeah, was yeah, going yeah. and stuff. And I'm like, it like was like genuine, and yep. it made my day better that she was like happy and asked me how my day was. And going. And your your comment was, man, it's it's just nice when people enjoy. It, it feels like they enjoy their work. Yeah, it, like makes your day better. Yeah, uh, for some reason, it's like an unspoken, you just feel it kind of thing. Like, oh, they're not mad at life. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, they're, they're no, they're, like they're living. They're live, um, laugh, loving, baby. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, we get to the we like get to the parking lot of the gym. He got four. Uh, so I guess he beat me, but he didn't get what he was gonna say. Um, and I was like, all right, I wonder if I could get five by the time we step foot into the gym. And we like just in the parking lot. Just in the parking lot. The gym is like. It's like on like an 800 meter block. So we pull in on one side, we drive down, there was no parking spot. So then we make a U up to the other side and in this U and then walking (laughs) back to the gym, I got 10. (laughs) And it's the thing that's, it's not annoying, but we both knew like the people that show up to CrossFit in this space are just they're just happy bro yeah like they're happy and it wasn't like there was like 10 people walking to the gym it was like people in their cars that were leaving yeah people showing up and i'm just like walking with my bag i just give them one of these and they're like hey i'm not like hey wave to me yeah he was not begging for him at all no and like i probably only knew three out of the 10 that like waved the other people i didn't i didn't know who they were not once you get like in that space i mean that was our what second day third day there yeah once you get there it's like a just a little breeze of ease bro like For right sure. getting into the parking lot you're just like oh man so nice to see my people this yeah. is tight these are these are people that work out <laughs> yeah and i think that's what's really cool for people that do crossfit because like yes you can go to the gym and work out and get really fit and better your life but i think the one thing that's special about crossfit is like everyone that goes to the class they're not there with headphones on doing their own thing yep you're all there to do the same thing like it's a group of people that you get close with and you like work together almost to achieve your goals you know yep. and i always say like fitness is better with friends that's why i'm so grateful to have the crew that i have here dallas zach like daniel coop freaking mm, that boy scott everybody you know, scott, scott like nate you know comes I mean? into town like anybody that drops in is just like it's so much fun to have the crew here to work out. And it's like, I'm not looking for people to push me. I'm just looking for like good vibes. You know, like I just want people that are going to be in here working hard, trying to better themselves. Yeah. We know we ain't pushing you, bro. We know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> My point was not that. <laughs> My point was like, I don't need other Dallas, Dallas, Dallas you pushing them, bro. Uh, bro. I do half his workout. He still beats me. <laughs> <laughs> but low key, like it's nice that like we all know each other. Dallas does half a workout. We're hyped, bro. Like we're hell yeah. we're like hell yeah, Dallas. Let's go. Baby. Just to look over and see someone else working. <laughs> yeah, like, it's awesome. It's a beautiful. But yeah, like feeling. when you're with it, you know, like I think it helps keep people accountable. And I think one people that like people that take granite for going to CrossFit classes, like 
I think a lot of people can probably relate to it. Like if you don't show up to class, like you probably have some friend that's messaging you being like, yo, where were you? You yeah, know, where you at, man? Come if not now. even the coach. So I think it's really cool to have people there that are, that want you to be there and enjoy you being there. And I think no one regrets going after they've, they've got themselves to the gym or did something that was hard. Yeah. Cause you feel better when you leave. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Even if you do a workout that was hard and you feel like you want to quit the whole time, but then you finish it, yep. that feeling after you're like, hell yeah, like I didn't quit. I yep. did it, you know? Level of accomplishment Like I didn't just give day. up and coast through the workout. Like I pushed myself. Like, yes, it probably wasn't the best result that I could have produced, like if I was feeling great, but it was the best result I could have produced in that time. Yeah. And like, and I, got, you know, I got to see my homie, you know what I'm saying? So it's, <laughs> life is good. Life is good. Say la vie, baby. Yeah. That, But that's that community aspect of it. The thing that everybody, you know, we talk about, but you don't really know what it is. But when you know what it is, you know what it is. Oh, exactly. Baby. I mean, I think I was talking to Daniel about it, too. I mean, he he had a really cool community back in Chico. And when he came to Boise, it's like once you're a part of something that's like that, it's really hard to find that again. Yep. You know, when you go somewhere else, once you, you've had like that good thing and there are gyms in the area, don't get me wrong, that, that, that are awesome. I mean, CrossFit Canvas, I think is one of those gyms that I've been to, um, that I think I would really vibe with the community. They're a little bit far away, so I haven't got to really be there, but from what I've seen, they're always super welcoming. Um, everyone's happy to be there. Like the yep. owners care a lot. So it's, uh, it's really cool to see that. Um, yeah, and that, that, that little stuff goes a long way oh, yeah. in the way that things feel. And that's why I think gyms are just like they're a reflection of the owner, you know? Like it all starts somewhere, and like the owner of the gym is the person that makes that that community what it is. And that's just a testament to that man, Adam Neifer, Doug. Yeah. The big Swiss Army knife, man. That dude ain't no joke. Dude, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, he's been to the games 10 times Um with the team he's won it in 2010 got third in 2017 so like yes he's had a lot of success but like the success of the gym i mean he might disagree with me like wasn't from like recognition of winning or being to the games 10 times like he opened the gym before he went to the games um just on like like he he wanted to open the gym like opened a space started putting out flyers and stuff and built it from that to like what it is now, like one of the most successful gyms, Dude. I think that's in CrossFit. I mean, I know last year he was the third, they had the third most open signups, um, at least in the U S um, I think in North America, which is just like crazy. I mean, you have some, some other gyms that are really popular and have a lot of signups, but also like they're, um, like, like CrossFit Mayhem is one of them. Like it's an awesome gym, but like they get a lot of recognition from Rich Froning. Yep. I just think it's really cool when you see some of those gyms that like they don't have a ton of big name athletes that are correlated with them, but their community is huge and awesome. And it's like that was built because the community is awesome. And like, yes, Mayhem, like they've maintained their community because their community is good, you yeah. know. But like the why people walk in the door at CrossFit at Vancouver is from like the community and the atmosphere that they make. Yeah. And that starts with big knife, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah. yeah so that dude's no joke. It's, it's dope because he can have. <laughs> the two time the two time <laughs> fittest man on earth two time working out right next to 10 a.m timmy you know what i mean 10 a.m Tim thrown down which is dope right next i to wish him. i could be like at cross of vancouver while they were competing yeah. like see oh. adam in competition hey. like i i joined i <laughs> started working with adam in 2019 <laughs> and his last season was 2018 you guys were telling me stories. Big A, hey, Nate was telling those stories. I, first off, I love, hey, you guys, Nate, Lauren, bruh, him and Justin, very similar in a lot of different ways. One of my favorite ways is how detailed they tell stories because I love a good storyteller. Justin's an amazing storyteller. <laughs> Goes into vivid detail, baby. You're not going to not have a picture painted when this boy's talking. And Nate is very similar. And when he was talking about the culture and the people that showed up to cross at Fort Vancouver, I'm looking at all these people in my brain like they're legends. <laughs> yeah. Had me feeling a little bit, in t- not intimidated, but just like, damn, these people are no joke. Jessica Core, I wasn't scared of her. I'm still not scared of her. <laughs> I'm still not. Don't get should it twisted. Be. You should be. <laughs> well, what you guys were saying to him, I'm like, dang, girl, this girl's no joke. Um but it's, I love hearing stories like that, and I love being able to meet the people behind the story because I, I don't know. I, I just 
I like it a lot. I like it. There's like legend, and then you meet the person who's like, oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's Jessica Core right there, bro. That's her. <laughs> Nigel, I, better, baby. I, better, I better go put away uh, my shoes real quick or else. <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> Nigel. Oh, don't. Hey, hold on. Yo, <laughs> I got to take it all the way back for this one, baby. Um, when I first moved back from. When I first moved back from LA, we started a gym, and our gym went to regionals uh, the first year as a, with the team. I wasn't on the team, even though I was the most fit person in the group. Um, <laughs> that's not a joke. Go look at the stats, baby. Uh, <laughs> but I at regionals, I remember watching individuals, and there was this man that not became a legend in my mind. He is a legend, bro, without a doubt. And... Uh, I remember watching him, and every time they would announce his name, Nigel Noriega, like I loved hearing his name. He was so cut up, bro, so cut up. And the way he worked out was just, I mean, he was out there just in clothes, bro, like just in clothes. He looked like the most chill person on the field. He wasn't decked out in Reebok and none of that stuff. He was just out there doing his thing. He looked so tight, working his ass off. But that was 2013. Justin was started going to Fort Vancouver when, 2019? Yeah. Bro, I didn't. I didn't go to CrossFit Fort Vancouver, which for me, I'm in I'm in Idaho Pacific Northwest is like the region we were in Northwest. So CrossFit Fort Vancouver, I always knew about it. Me and son knew Adam through com- competing. Um, and that boy Nigel Noriega, man, when I first, I know the two time, two Dude, time. This CrossFit is why Games I champ. told you to take a picture with him when you were there. Cause I, you could put and that's that up. exactly why I took a picture. This right here. The legend. Yeah, Nigel but I Noriega. wanted you to take your guys' shirts off so you can nah, see. Nah, nah, nah. We don't need that. All right. <laughs> I <laughs> wanted, I wanted Zach to take his shirt off so you could see what. No, I mean Zach's. I mean he's he looks good. I mean no. That's Dave. Look that's at Dave Castro. Hey, baby. Oh yeah. Don't, hey, I'll tell that story next. You know what I mean? I'm approved by Dave Castro. Nigel Noriega would be endorsed by Dave Castro. He is no joke. So cut. So fit. Insane. Beefcakes. And when I first saw him, like, I, you know, I know the two-time CrossFit Games champ. But when I walked in and saw that dude, I was a little bit like, that's him. That's Nigel Noriega. Oh, my <laughs> God. He's just a CrossFit legend to me, to me. Yeah. And that that's what he'll always be to me. Took a photo with him this past time, met him, shook his hand. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Noriega. It's nice to meet you, sir. And found out a little about him. He's he's even more impressive once you find out a little bit about his personal life. It's like, yeah. They say he graduated high school when he was 12 years old. Crazy. He's like super smart. Like I'm pretty like I'm going to sound like an idiot cuz I don't know what he did. Just say just say he's hella smart. He's so smart. Like he worked on <laughs> something like like worked for NASA or something like that. Like some type of like science where I was like, "Oh my gosh." Like he's some Neil like deGrasse he knows. Tyson like type he goes stuff. in on whatever he does and like he obviously is a fitness enthusiast, so. And the thing is he's, tight is he's a member at the gym. Yeah. He just is at the gym. Yeah. Like picture Noah Olson, but like almost fifty years old, and still that jacked. Oh, isn't he fifty? Yeah, I think, I think he's, he's like forty nine or fifty. I don't know. Yeah, yeah he's fifty. Bro, swole, baby. Yeah. His back is crazy, <laughs> crazy. And it, it's just I don't know. The people at that gym are just so impressive to me. I I love to see communities like that. I love to see even to get to experience it through quarterfinals. Man. That quarterfinals experience for me was just so good, man. I'm not even going to lie. It was really good to be with my boy, the two-time CrossFit Games champ, soon to be three-time, don't play with me. Um, And Nate, man, Dallas being up there, it was just like, it was tight, man. No, it, it's, it it's was, true. I mean, our, our crew rolls deep, but man, yeah, man, getting into the quarterfinals, like, obviously the whole gym's there. I think we had like 20 or 30 people that were taking it like decently serious about like doing the workouts, strategizing them. Other people just hitting the workouts because they're fun workouts. Yeah, and then you do. I think me, Mac, Trista, and Zach were there to like make it to the next round. You know, I think everyone else was there to like get the best score they possibly could, whereas us four were there to make it to the next round. Zach's in 35 to 40. Um, division and obviously me, Trista, Mac are in that open division trying to make um, semis. So it was uh, it was pretty awesome. I mean, to hit the workouts, uh, I was confident in my fitness that I could hit all the workouts one and done. And even if they go badly, I thought I would still have the capacity to make top forty. 
So that was my plan going into it. Pick the best strategy for me to do uh, workouts one and done and knock them out. I was going to do one workout Wednesday, two Thursday, one Friday. Be done. Wrap it up. Take a deload for the weekend or for that week and hit it hard the next week. But on the way out there, I got like like on Friday or Saturday, the, like uh, the days before yeah. quarters, I got like a random head cold, got like body chills. It was weird. Like it came in hard and... By like two or three days, I was sick. And then after that, like it kind of just lingered. Like I didn't feel that bad. Like I had a, a stuffed nose. But um, when I would work out, like just my output wasn't as high. I noticed it on the machines where I was like, ah, oh, dude, my machine work's been going really well lately. And my output's just not as high as it normally is. Um, and I'd like to think that was because I had a cold, but who knows? So instead of doing all the workouts, I was like, man, those high power output workouts, like the clean and then just that. CNS like killer of the wall balls and uh, burpees like I want to push those off as far as I can because the more days you're away from being sick just the better so I changed it to just one workout yeah. a day um, where you guys hit one workout on Wednesday um, the workout that we thought that would be most beneficial to retest um, if it didn't like go well or most room for improvement whereas I think some of the other ones uh, hopefully your first goes the best, like that wall ball burpee one. That's a rough one to do <laughs> twice, you know, <laughs> and it's long enough to where like a minute improvement is normally really big in a workout, but in a workout, that's almost 20 minutes. Like, yes, there's going to be a lot of improvement, but not as much as like 10 more reps on that interval workout yeah, you know hey shout out to nolan you know what i mean oh my gosh two times. <laughs> dude nolan shout out to nolan baby <laughs> he uh he did the workout <laughs> and was like four reps shy of finishing the burpees and wall balls so he did it in the morning rested until the afternoon watched us hit it and then hit it after us he again was, hey he was gassed up and he was four he reps saw Justin crush he was like yeah i got it in me and dog. then he hit his first round on pace to finish sub 18 and we're like that might not be yeah. the smartest <laughs> if you didn't finish last time and now you're on pace to finish in 18 minutes that's not good <laughs> mm, that's coming out hot baby and but yeah and he finished you know what i mean that's that's one of the things that's tough is like i mean he he, he he worked out for 20 minutes. He didn't finish the workout. Well, I mean, he yeah, he worked out for he, 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah. He, he didn't, didn't stop. He didn't I mean? stop. Like he Even though when he realized, uh-oh, he like, I came out was. too hot, <laughs> he still like did the work and finished it. He's like, I'm not quitting. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Like That's, <laughs> that's, that's the mindset. Yeah, but uh, that's, that's, you know. yeah, I wrapped up with that um, wall ball burpee workout. Normally not a strength of mine, but um, the day before I did the clean and jerk workout, which was like I wanted to get 30-plus reps. I ended up getting 29, but that was the first workout out of the three that I've done where I was like, okay, that felt how I thought it would feel. I mean, and it, not in that sense, like in the workout, my body was responding the way I'm used to it responding. Whereas the first two, like I got on the rower and like normally on my sprint start, I can get it above 2000 pretty comfortably. And like, I couldn't do that, which was just weird. The rest of it felt fine. And then the gymnastics one's normally like a pretty strong workout with me with the rope climbs and muscle ups. And I saw it a great score, but I felt like I was capable of getting closer to that eight minute mark. And it just felt different. Clean and jerk one I did next. That actually, I was like, you know what? I didn't get 30, but that felt about right. And wrapped it up with the wall ball workout. And crushed it. Which I was, crushed that's probably it. the most proud I've been of a workout that I've done in a really long time where it's a weakness workout for me. Um, but I was like looking at it and I was like, man, in, in order to go 1630, I mean, you do seven burpees in 30 seconds, like averaged, and then you do your wall balls in two minutes and that's 1630. And I was like, man, that seems so doable. But I watched a lot of people die and blow up. So I was like, <laughs> frick, maybe I'd even need to go slower than that. Like, I don't even know. And I came out with that plan. I went like 517 round one. And then round two, I went 514 or something. So I went a little bit faster. And I was like, in those first two rounds, I was like, wow, this feels way too easy. Like, I don't know if I'm not doing all the reps or what. Cause like, yeah, it's. You thought you were getting tricked, huh? Yeah, it was weird. I was like, man, I feel so good right now. And I got to round three, uh, just did the same sets on my wall balls, but just took less reps or less rest and got to the burpees and just kind of throttled it down from the beginning and my last round was like 455 so i went 517 514 455 and i was like felt really good and i was like man that was 
awesome, especially having the first three workouts not go the way I wanted, especially some of them being strengths, and then do a workout that's weakness and have a good show. And I'm like, okay, that's where I've felt my fitness was the past couple of weeks because going into quarters, man, I felt really, really good about where my fitness was at. So I was kind of bummed to not have the showing that I wanted um, or at least like doing the workouts and like, man, I felt like I was capable of more than that. Um, whereas like wrapping up with that, the clean and jerk and burpees, I was like, no, that's more of a representation of where I feel like my fitness is at. So yeah. I, I was pumped about that. And man, having Mac and Trista there, I mean, we're taking less people to quarters, uh, this year than we did last year yeah. overall. And Mac, we took 120 in North America to, uh, semis and he was 118. He made it by two spots. Mm, and mm, then mm. this year, they were only taking 80 total. Big Mac Daddy, um, baby. So obviously, he had to be top 40 in the West. And he came in at like 20th, and Trista was 21st. Like Bad it was freaking awesome to see them put a clinic on, just execute well, and just totally different athletes than they were last year. I mean, last year, they redid a lot of the workouts, and every single redo, they got a lot better in. This year, hit the strategy kind of the same plan as next year. Like, Hey, let's do these workouts. We'll retest them. And they retested them and didn't have the improvement that they thought they would did. And like, yes, you can look at that as something that's not good, but you could also look as like, dude, my first go is really close to my best. Yeah. And I think that was super cool to see by them. Um, just to execute on the workouts really, really well. And, um, Obviously, everything's not fine. I don't think Mac has all his workouts verified. I have my workouts verified. Still waiting on Trista to get all her workouts verified. But just to see the improvement that they've made from last year to this year was awesome. And that means we got all three of us competing at the West Coast, which is crazy. It's going to be so dope, dog. I'm that's pumped. A, that's that's like – and not only are all three of you going, which is dope in their progression. Mac's progression from last year to this yeah, year. Yeah, Mac has made crazy, a huge dog. jump from it's last so year to this year. so tight to see. Because, you know, he's he's always tried hard. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a hard worker. And like you said, your first year from working with Adam, your improvement in fitness wasn't physical. Yeah. It was like you got more fit through being smarter. Your yeah. approach to everything. And that's like I've, I've only known Max since last year based on like you knowing him and training with him. And then seeing his year of training, how you guys communicate and how you've kind of brought him along or he's come along through knowing and talking with you and Adam. Um, it's just, an, I don't know, I'm excited for him. But yeah, dude, the thing I mean, is dope is like you're as excited for his success, almost more excited for his success than your own. Yeah, dude. I mean, <laughs> I was I was telling you about like last year, like <laughs> kind of a side tangent, but I remember after semis, I won it or after quarters, I won he squeaked in at 118 like it was crazy so and we're like in the car and he's playing and he had like this truck with the crazy system in it and was playing this song and every time i hear that song now i just think back to quarterfinals Bro, you, you just gotta like, you gotta pause for a little moment and let that video play out <laughs> <laughs> Such a and good moment, dog. dude. It was just like every time I hear that song now, like that's the vibe that I remember, and just being so pumped for him and seeing him work so hard in all those quarterfinal work. I mean, there's so many moments of like the handstand push-ups, uh, one of him grinding through it, and then which was crazy. Which is actually me and him were just talking about it. Is like we we're talking about all how much the leaderboards was like shooken yeah. up. Like it doesn't even matter looking at leaderboard in the beginning because it is completely different now than it was before. Like I wish I had a screenshot of what the leaderboard showed before. And if those of you guys that don't know what was going on, there has been so many no reps given out for that box step up workout that people were in the top 10 in the region that have dropped way outside of a qualifying spot. Um, like people that were in the top 10 that dropped back out to the last heat. Like it's just been crazy. And last year, Mac was in the position of like, he has to have a really great quarterfinals for him to make semis. And like I said, he was 118 and 120. Like he did it. But um, one of the last workouts was, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like 50 GHDs, 1,000 meter row, 20 V ups, 500 meter row, 10 V ups. I don't know what it was, but it was like V ups rowing and GHDs. And we had a judge watch him do it. Adam was there like watching, doing it, and he finishes, had a really competitive score in it, and we're there watching the video, and I was looking at him and being like, man, I think his V-ups were no reps. Like, 
and the standard was like your knee, your foot had to be above your knee when you bring it up off the ground. And I was watching, I'm like, man, I could see the argument of CrossFit not giving him a single good rep on those V ups. And like, it was super close. We were watching it, but I was like, dude, if he gets any penalty, especially a major penalty, like, there's not even a, a shot that he could qualify like that. Like, yeah. the major penalty is going <clears> to <throat> completely drop you. And like, we're like, to or we're like 90 minutes i think out from like deadline so he has to like rest a little bit hit the workout re-upload his video and then submit it and i was like dude i really do think if you hit it again right now like even if you get 70 percent of your score i think that's going to be better than what they give you for your major penalty yep. so he freaking took like 20 minute break get it up freaking sent that workout again <laughs> doing like 200 ghds and over 100 v-ups like talk about rabdo dude he oh my gosh i gotta see if i can find the video i think you have it he goes to get up off the ground after his last set of v-ups and like can't because his abs are like just not working oh my like goes gosh. to sit up and can't but like you just see the grind that he put in and like worked so hard i get like literally goosebumps <laughs> to see him be willing to like hit that workout again sell out on it like almost a complete failure and then see him like make it was like one of the coolest things ever like i got complete goosebumps right now i've probably been shaking for the past 20 minutes <laughs> i was sitting like this and i was shaking and i put my leg down because i'm like people are gonna think like i'm cold or something but like no dude this like adrenaline gets me going but uh yeah, I mean, it's so cool. And like I said about that song, like I just think about all those moments. Like I hear that song and I think about all of quarterfinals and stuff because it was really cool to see, you know? That but is. it just shows that like like what – like holding the standard and like having Adam and people in your corner to be like, hey, man, like this is what we think. Like you can obviously go and do what you want, but like I think this is the best – yeah, it does. Way to do it. And I think it's just crazy that he was willing to freaking. Yeah, go I think there. that's what was cool watching your team and why I think that you guys hit standards so well is because you have Adam while Max going, while Trist is going, yelling at Mac to straighten his leg. Like it might be a close rep on those step ups, but he was making sure that like every rep that Mac did was going to be a rep when it was yeah. on video. Yep. And then even going back and watching Trist's video of the muscle up workout, he's like, those muscle ups are pretty close. It's like two, three no reps that could be argued against. So redo the workout, and she redid it, did a, did worse, and he's like, submit that one. Yeah, because yep. like uh, he thinks those reps were cleaner and, and better for the leaderboard. It's, it's crazy. Yep. Which the is like crazy. I mean, holds. yeah, we <laughs> talked about. It. I was like, if I hit quarters here in Boise without him, I think there's a good chance I could have got a major penalty in the box step ups, and it's not because I would have been cheating. It's just that was a hard standard, and like. You had to keep your eyes up, hips straight. Yep. Like there, there was just there's a lot of things to balance. And like there, when bro. you're an athlete, and like especially me, is like I'm not trying to do no reps, but I'm trying to go as fast as possible. And a lot of times that means riding the line of a no rep as close as you possibly can. Yep. It's like doing um, like pull ups, and the standards like chin over bar. Like why would you put your chin like six inches over the You're bar where you can do it like in here right there dog yeah just barely <laughs> yeah. over because it's faster and like that's how competitors do if you're trying to move fast and i think that's just what happened it wasn't like anybody was trying to cheat they were just trying to go fast thinking that they were holding the standard and you go back and watch a video and it was like mac like in the moment when you're watching it and doing it it looks fine but you slow it down you start watching looking at the standard and it's like oh that's actually really close yeah you know and i think just that happened to too many people you know and i could have 100 percent been one of those people if i wasn't there with adam and him holding me to the standard and it's been wild to see because i think the sad part about it is is that like if those people were in a live competition doing that workout and they had correct judges and they were like no rep you wouldn't have just continued to do no reps. You would have gone a little bit slower to make sure that you were meeting the standard. But the deductions that people got were so significant that it completely dropped them out when they were in the top 10 and you have to be in the top 40 to qualify. It dropped them to like a hundred. And it's like, 
that wouldn't have happened in, if it was in a live competition with the correct judge. So it just, to me, like I, when I watch the video of those people, I'm like, to me, it doesn't look like they're cheating. It doesn't look like they're trying to do bad reps. It's just, they were trying to go fast. They were riding those line. I think you could argue a lot of the reps were good, but there's obviously the other side of the argument where you could argue they were bad, but it just sucks that that was the thing that, Separate people. That, that, that separate them the completely not qualifying for semifinals. Yeah. I think a lot of them, not everybody, s- like deserves to be at quarters from their fitness level, you know? Um, and like, I just don't think that the step over was a significant like indicator of fitness level. The step up? Yeah, or the step up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was the indicated like level of fitness for to, to, to dock someone to not qualify? It's like, just sucks. I think that was the step ups were the least significant part of that workout. Like the snatches were hard. The rowing was the majority it, it of the workout. The and then, the, and then the step ups were just kind of like something that you had to be mentally tough enough to move through. Yeah. Um, which everyone was, it just, yeah, I just, I just, what there's happens. a part of that. I'm not even going to like doo-doo on the judges because like Nate Lauren judged yours and yeah. Nate, the guy that went with me my first time going through it, um, I can't remember what his name was, but Nate was judging him. And, like, when you're judging a step up, you have to look at, first off, two feet on the box, second, knees, then hips, then shoulders, then head. And it's like, if that all, all happens like happen that. in a different sequence, it's really hard for a judge, even high level. Nate, Nate is a really, really good judge. Um, it was hard for him to judge somebody. And it's like, where do you call a no rep? Where do you not? If you see these things and you miss that thing, it would have been a no rep. But then you look up to those things and you don't see this thing, then that would have been a no rep. But if you don't call either of them on video, you can see everything very easily. And to be extremely critical of a judge when it's like a standard that we all see written down and see it just like depicted in the image. But the first time judges are judging a step up to that standard and that fast is I, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna doodle on anybody. It's hard to judge. Period. Dude, I think, I could be wrong because anything that I say, I don't know if it's fact. But I'm pretty sure CrossFit Mayhem hired like CrossFit Games level judges. Yeah, they had some of like in the camps. They were in different camps. Like yeah, so like their their Proven videos, they think judges. like, hey, we, we yeah, their AFJ or whatever. They yeah, are. yeah, like yeah, we yeah. don't have to worry about the standard because we have these judges and i think proven and mayhem both had athletes that were in a qualifying spot i think both of them were in the top 10 that completely dropped out and now they're not going to semifinals and they had crossfit games level judges yep. which is just like it's tough bro mind-boggling like i get deducting them and like take them from the first heat and make them like 35th so they're in the last heat which i do think is a significant disadvantage because the top score in the first heat is not even going to be remotely competitive to any score in the top and like the, the last heat. Everybody gets to see you go, dude. Almost <laughs> like every like in heat one, like everyone from heat two beat heats one. Everyone from heat three beats heat two, and everyone from heat four beats heat three relatively. So like to be in that first heat, you almost have all these other people that are going to be beating you. So like if you're in that last heat, like you just got to push and grind and not worry about anywhere else. Whereas like, if you're in that top heat, you know, if you beat the people in your heat, that your score is going to be relatively good. Yeah. Which is just like, I think it's a big disadvantage. And anyways, what I'm getting at is I think a lot of fit people are not going to be at semis, which sucks. The big dog, Patty V said, y'all and he want better watch out. Nah, he just cheated, dude. He was just trying to cheat. (laughs) Nah, he said, he said, you guys better enjoy your, he said, it it was so hard. Dude, I can't wait for like day two to come around and him be in heat three. Well, that's what, (laughs) like, how's it down there, Pat? Huh? Uh, Huh? He said, uh, you saw what he posted. He said, you guys enjoy your, like, enjoy day one. Yeah. That was was gangster. It was gangster, but he's probably going to be in heat three or something. He's going to be in 11th. Freaking going into day two. I'm going to be so happy. He looks hella hard, you know what I mean, with his chest hair, and he's buff, and he's all fit. But then he's super nice, like, in everything he posts. But that he sounded gangster when he posted that. That was some Mike Tyson stuff. Box step-ups, typically, you think, like, get two feet on top of the box, stand up. And and that that second leg coming up, bro, that knee getting locked out, you had to be dramatic, like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you had to be and and the whole time before we went it's crazy because like this is another testament to adam and the team you guys got is like 
we saw Hopper and them go. Do we mess with Hopper? Do we like him? Nah. Okay. <laughs> Nah, I, <laughs> I, I gotta check because last time, bro, last time I'm like, yeah, we don't mess with that dude. We don't mess with Hopper. Justin's like, nah, he's cool. He's cool. I'm like, all right, we mess with Hopper. Nice to meet you, dog. And then later, Justin's like, bro, why'd you say nice to meet you, dog? <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta check in. Yeah, we don't, we kind of mess with Hopper. I gotta keep Hopper. people guessing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we watched them go and they all had their boxes angled to the corner. Yep. And th it's just like, they didn't say it had to be any certain way. So you think I'm good. Trista came in. And she's talking to Adam, and at, Trista starts doing box step ups with the corner. She's like, "Oh, it's so much easier. I can go faster." Adam looks at him. He's like, "Yeah, those look good. Yeah, those are reps." And then he's sitting there for a second. Nah, we're not gonna do that. Turn your box straight. Like, yeah, we're not gonna. We're not. We're just not gonna do it. Yeah, because and there was too, a chance that like chance. CrossFit could like deduct you for the uncommon movement clause because exactly. like in competition, what competition are they gonna let you? turn your box sideways and do step ups that way because like, that's never going to happen. It's not happening. Yeah. At the end of the day, CrossFit should have just done box step overs. I know that's probably what everyone's thinking. I just like, it I can't believe the they issue. were that hard on the standard when they could have just done box step overs and had no issues because it's really easy to meet that standard. I know, but they, I, it's, it's a funny, it's funny that it's like, yeah, you could have just done box step overs. You don't, you don't gain anything by See what Theo's doing? making sure people's heads are not looking down to see the box. It's like, <coughs> now yeah. it's a rep. It's kind of yeah. crazy. And and uh, that's not to criticize anybody, bro. I'm not talking trash about nothing. I'm just saying it's a tough beat. It's, yeah. it's like a hard beat for a lot of people. And yeah. it's, uh, my, my feels go out to them, man. Yeah. No, I, I'll, I'll talk about like a, like a hot topic, but uh, everyone knows Hiller like in the space and stuff. And like, he's called me out. He's called everyone out. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that was interesting is, I didn't get to see it, so I could be saying this wrong, but from my, from what I understand, from what I heard, that he went out and judged an athlete, and that athlete ended up having a major penalty. They're still in a qualifying spot, thank God, but, like, I think it just goes to show, like, he's someone that advocates holding the standard. Like, he calls everyone out if people aren't holding the standard, and he obviously was judging, trying to make sure, like, his athlete was holding the right standard. Yep. And even though he, like, I think anybody would have said, Hey, if you want anyone to make sure that you're doing the right standard, have Hiller watch you. Cause he'll call, he'll call out anything. Yeah. Like he's not afraid to say, like he's hey, not that's afraid. Not it, he's, he's not afraid to give a no rep. Yo, you're making this real good. Um, and he still had his athlete have a major penalty, not just like no reps, but a major penalty, which is, crazy and like this is not a knock on hiller at all like it happens dude i remember judging marston on an open workout and I, it was the one that i did it was the one to ten back down to one uh deadlifts and burpees and i made him miss a round <laughs> like i just missed around and he had a great score and then they went back and watched and i messed it up like dude i don't hate on judges ever because their job is hard. And every time I'm at the games, I'm thanking my judge. Cause I know they have the most impossible job. Cause it's very rare that they get like, Oh my God, look what that judge did. Like if you're talking about judge, you're pretty much talking about how bad they are. But yeah. uh, anyways, that's just after that happened with him, he was not making excuses, but like explaining why it happened. And which is like very legitimate. Like I think anyone could have made that snakes. I said I could have done that workout here and probably I would have got major penalties if it wasn't for Adam. Yep. But like he gives the explanation, like I'm sure it was very understandable, but then when other people do that like every day, he he like still will call them out and make fun of them doing no reps and it's like I'm very pro athlete. Like I, I want to support athletes. I think it's in order to make our sport professional, you need more athletes doing CrossFit full time to be able to do this and that like just means more sponsors, more eyes on the sport, people being more competitive. But, uh, I just wish that athletes got more of the benefit of the doubt. Cause I doubt, I'm sure there are athletes out there that are trying to cheat, but I think the vast majority of, of athletes are trying to do the right thing and they'll do workouts and Hiller might make a video about them getting no reps or not holding the standard. And they don't even have a judge. They're just doing a workout on their own Whereas like, like Hiller was watching someone 
looking for no reps, didn't give them any no reps, and CrossFit still said that they were no reps. Like, the standard's really hard to meet, and I doubt, like, I'm sure that you could watch my YouTube and watch some muscle-ups or watch some thrusters that were, like, close to being locked out. And it wasn't like I'm trying to cheat, dude. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in here trying to get fitter, you know? <laughs> but, like, uh, it just it just happens. No, no reps are anvil, and that's why we have judges at the games. And uh, I just want people to be more understanding of that because – freaking hard it's yeah, hard it's being hard. a judge dude. yeah even when you have judges like or even like if you have judges it makes you kind of ride that line a little bit more because you're trusting you're, you're relying yeah, you, you that the judge tells judge. you if yep. it's a rep or not so you're like i want to move as fast and quickly as i possibly can efficiently and so on a wall ball i'm going to get as close as i can yep. because it's faster yep. yeah and you're going to trust that your judge will tell you if it's a no rep if it's no rep i know i need to go a little bit deeper and that's the next rep no so, that's you know? a that's a and, great point because like you're gonna like you do Murph, right? And you're doing air squats. Like you're going to start riding. Like if your judge is not making you like pause at the top of each air squat, you're not going to pause at the top of each air squat. Like you're going to try to move as fast as you possibly can. And like you just inch towards that line. Your judge is like, Hey, lock out a little bit more. You're like, all right. Okay. Well not that fast then. And then like you slow it down, back it off. Or if you get a no rep, then it's like, okay, that was too much. And you kind of flirt with that line. At least that's what I do. Um, that's what, and, and if, that's what every athlete, that's what every does. athlete and does. Air squats is probably the worst because yeah, you can hard. move so fast on air squats, but you have that tendency to either not pop on the, on the top or not go all the way down. Yep. But people are moving so quick. Dude. How's the judges like, <laughs> and <laughs> also if you video anything and then slow it down in slow motion, there's so many things that probably look and, like bro, no put, reps. Put the angle to the, the angle that so the angle work, of the camera. It, like, yeah, bro, dude. Come on. It is hard. And it's not like you said, it's not a knock to Hiller. Cause I, I I bet he was gutted, bro. Like I don't oh my think gosh. that that I was can't. his intention to have an athlete put their trust in him no, to dude. ride that line and then have them get a major penalty or or even a minor penalty. It's like you 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 would feel sick, bro. That would suck. Yeah, dude, it would be. It's that like the suck. worst one, dude. I did it to Marston, and he's Marston's an athlete. Don't get me wrong, but he doesn't compete in it for a living. It yeah. wasn't trying to make and you semis, felt bad. and I felt terrible yep. i was like how couldn't i freaking count to 10 and back <laughs> like i could not believe i did that like i felt so bad i felt like an idiot because it was obviously filmed on a buttery bros episode like <laughs> and i'm pretty sure it was like the round of nine it was like a high <laughs> it was a high number dude like super significant and i effed it and he had to redo the workout and dude. did so much worse he, he does nine and instead of doing 10 nine you're no, just like and okay you want to know something even worse about it <laughs> Dang, he's like bro isn't this like nine? I'm like, no, but it's 10. And he's like, and then he's like, okay. It kept it like, he even told me about it and I messed it up. So I've like, ever since that experience with Marston, I do not judge anybody that has anything important because the job's freaking so freaking hard because like you want to hold the standard, but then sometimes holding the standard makes the athlete go slow. But then if you aren't hard about holding the standard, then they get a major penalty and you feel even worse. And like, the judges it's like feel a, bad, bro. They don't. It, the thing that's callous in those situations is to be like, it's the athlete's responsibility to make sure they do all the repetitions. It's not on the judge to count your reps. Blah 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 blah. Like that's not how it goes. There's a no. relationship between athlete and judge, and judge and athlete. And the job of the judge is to do the best they can in judging to the standard as yeah. far as they understand. Yeah, and I've I've, I've had judges that will come up to them like, hey, are you going to be able to count for me? Yeah. And like sometimes they say no, sometimes they say yes, but like and then you have to say like, hey, could you count every five? Could you? There's like a yeah. conversation that takes yeah. place, and there's an understanding. Yeah, all those things happen, and still with what the movement was in an online competition, people can say, well, just do box step overs. They know that now. We can't even be mad at CrossFit because they're like, oh damn. Yeah, they make mistakes. <laughs> like <laughs> they're oh, trying, man. dude. It's yeah. uh, it's freaking hard. Yeah, and sometimes like the athlete just doesn't have. It doesn't look like a no or it looks like a rep, but it is like Rebecca made that whole like video about yeah. how her gymnastic elbow like she doesn't yeah. look like she's fully locked out. But like she you have to talk to your judge ahead of time. Hey, this is what locked out looks this like for me. me. This is so me. check out my elbow. This is what I got. Yep. You know, yeah. so I mean, that's the conversation, the trust that's that happens hard. with your judge. I'm not trying to cheat. I'm not trying to not hold the standard. This arm straight chin under, over bar, whatever the standard is, I'm doing my best to uphold it and. Sometimes that line gets a little blurry. Sometimes yeah, that blur leads to some mm, mm, mm moments. I still don't have my scores validated or verified. Um, Any of them? 
Zero, but yeah. masters. I, mean, I, I don't think, think it's there's they a don't, high they, on masters. They don't care about masters. <laughs> <laughs> They're, <not worried. laughs> They're like Sam Dancer looks good, so we're yeah. just well. I think our that. deadline is today. Oh, so that's why they're trying to like push to get ours done. Where I think the Masters deadline is a little bit longer. They're like Masters athletes, they don't hit depth yeah. anyways. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all soft. But anyways, anyway. you, we can talk about the leaderboard and standards and stuff forever because it's always a hard line. I think the thing that sucks, the last thing I'm going to say on it is I know an athlete that was in the top 10, they gave her like a 200, like they gave her a deduction and instead of getting like 15th in the workout, she got like 200th in the workout. But then they're only reviewing people in the top 40 or 50. Yeah, that's So tough. then it's like if that's they tough. viewed every score from 50 to 200 where she got her deduction to, I bet you a lot of those would have been deducted, which would in turn brought her back up, which yeah. I think that's like the, the thing that's hard about giving someone that big of a penalty because, man, I just – it sucks, dude. I, I mean, my biggest fear – I mean, this is – what I do for a living. And if you're not like for me, like if I don't make it to the games, I mean, even last year, I'll be honest. Like I, I had that feeling. It was like, I got third, I got first, I got first. And then I get 13th or whatever I got last year. And like your mind goes like, dude, do, do the sponsors want to work with me? Cause if they don't want to work with me, then like I might have to go get another job to keep doing CrossFit. The thing I love, which is like, what no one wants to do. I mean, hey, it's, hey, let these sponsors not want to work with my boy. We, we'll have some <laughs> words, all right? You but, wanna, like, it's a real thing that boy? people deal with, especially, like, the bubble athletes and people trying to make semis. It's just – it's freaking hard. A lot of those semifinal athletes are not full-time CrossFitters. They're people that have another job. And yep. especially the games athletes, like, you finally start making it to that point where, like, okay, maybe I could justify quitting my job and just doing this. But it's, uh, it's rough. And, and even for me, it's like I'm making – a decent amount of money. I mean, I'm so grateful for the people that I work with that they've supported me. Like, like right when I was early, they like signed me for contracts that I didn't think that I deserved. And, uh, they're continuing to work with me, even though I am still not at the top, which I'm so grateful for. But it's like, dude, if I get injured or something like, yes, I've made a lot of money, but also it's like, I'm 25. It's not like this money's going to make me last until I'm 50 75 hey, years hey, old put so that in bitcoin baby stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> so for me it's just like I, i'm trying to work as hard as i possibly can to set up a future for me because i love doing crossfit so much that this is what i want to do this is what i want to make a living do and this is what i want to do for the rest of my life so like that's what i'm trying to do and if you aren't competing at a high level and you don't have the eyes and uh people aren't wanting to don't think that you're cool. <laughs> you're, you're not going to get those sponsors and you're not going to have the opportunity to do this. So, uh, for me, I think last year that was like the biggest realization is like, I'm so grateful to be here and have all you guys that support me and, and are, like make me able to do what I'm able to do is just awesome. And I'm grateful every single day, every single year that I'm able to do this and I'm not going to take any of it for granted. Cause I think that's kind of where I was, um, in 2020 and 2021. Like I was just so grateful to be here um, and doing this. And I think that's like, that was my new year's resolution is just like, get back to doing that. Stop stressing about all those things that I just talked about and just work out. Cause that's what got me to where I am. And I think that's, what's going to get me to where I want to be. So. Uh, we love the champ, right? We love the two time champ. I'm grateful you to love. be here. That, <laughs> no, I love, we, you know, you guys, I see you guys in the comments. Come on now. That's all right. We got I, mad I, I got, love, baby. Yeah, we, do. we got mad love for we the do. champ, baby. And it's something that I think is dope. We talked about community earlier. Like, I feel like we got a little, you could cut out a little community. CrossFit Shred Shed, baby. baby. CrossFit Shred Shed and the YouTube channel. These people in the comments be showing love. Yeah, Always. Man. Dude, Always it's awesome. Love. Like, I think it's, uh, we just kind of get to do what we do. I mean, this podcast is something that we're trying out. And like, I mean, you guys saw from the beginning of the show, it's like we, it's not like we're hopping on here to do a specific podcast. The reason why I wanted to do this in the first place was like, dude, we sit around and talk about what we're talking about right now yep. anyways. And I thought that those are always my favorite conversations. Some of it's related to CrossFit. Some of it's not. We're just like rambling and talking. And I think those are my favorite conversations that I have with people. I think that's how you really get to know people. And starting this was kind of, that idea and you guys saw the start of the show the microphones were on we're sitting here waiting for dallas to to get rolling and we're just talking and then 
kind of felt like we were in it and Dallas was like hey we need to start i'm like we didn't hey, i thought we already started like, like we, don't, we don't stop baby <laughs> we keep it going we don't stop but like yeah we're just here talking and and kind of talking about whatever comes to mind so it's just pretty cool that for one you guys enjoy it i mean if you guys don't enjoy it let us know oh they let us know they let <laughs> us know. They'll, they'll let us know when we do something bad <laughs> they let us know they're like zach you say like too many times you guys say like <laughs> no, too much that's me <laughs> we say like a lot we do i pay attention to it now though the dude that brought it up in the comments i don't yeah. know what your name is or username but i think about it every time we're on here trust me dude there's every a time. there's lots of people that have made fun of me for that but it's nothing to make fun of man that's just the way we talk out yeah. here like, dude i'm not a professional on. talker like, oh my god I'm trying to figure this out as we go. We talk Dude, like a valley girl. Oh, my God. I don't think there's probably too many people out there that have sat with, like, headphones on and talked into a microphone. I know my first time doing it was when we tried to do this podcast. It's, like, it's a weird feeling. It's a, like, it's a good – you feel powerful. Yeah, yeah, you feel yeah. like you need to, like, talk in, like, a different way and sound sophisticated because it feels so formal and – then like you go back and hear yourself, I'm like, oh my god. You said <laughs> he you said, said like that. like eight times in that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> That's just the way. As soon as I like stop thinking talk, about yeah, it, yeah. the likes just come out. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It is. What, everyone yeah. has a filler word. Hey, make sure yeah. you like and subscribe. I know my. That's filler. why he says like so much because you yeah. guys need to yeah. like. Yeah. You guys, you guys need to like get and the subscribe. likes up, That's baby. Right. Get the likes up. <laughs> um, my filler word is mother. <laughs> <laughs> It really is though. <laughs> I know, for real. I know. On this, it's easy for me to I say like sometimes, but it's easy for me to not say like so much because yeah. I already come on here saying don't say mother <laughs> like don't I come say in here it, <laughs> trying to say not say like. Yeah. The thing that sucks is you guys probably didn't even notice that Dallas I say like that, like that. <laughs> that I say like that much, but now that I just pointed it out, you're going to listen to this episode or in all the episodes and all the youtube like dude he really does say like all the time and then it's just going to drive you insane and then you're probably never going to want to listen to me talk again that's not true yeah but i'm gonna work on it I'm working on it yeah don't <laughs> please yeah, don't, don't, don't do it don't, don't, don't do it so don't listen to that part listen to the yeah. other part where this I is I my job guys, guys. <laughs> hey dallas is out here eating bro Come yeah on. my yeah. kids need to eat yeah <laughs> picture of my kids right yeah. here <laughs> yeah if you guys don't subscribe you're not only affecting me you're affecting dallas dallas and his family his my, whole family my kids yeah, and he just adds eight chickens every single week. So I know, <laughs> we got to pay for that chicken feed. Dude, they're baby. about the chicks that I gave you are about ready to come back. Yeah, we only lost one. We only I'll, lost. I'll one. show. I'll show the chickens here. Here they are. Look how big they are. That's all five of them right there. R.I.P. The sixth one. Those aren't quite ready to go to Justin yet. Here's one of the kids you're feeding. And my one-eyed dog. Hey, Pete. I actually ended up getting another chicken. <laughs> Yo, the chickens you got now are... They're getting so exotic, bro. Oh, dude, that's the plan, baby. I got. They're cool. Did I tell the story on here about all the chickens? I don't think so. I don't know. Look, so hold, look at all those. Look at all those. <laughs> dude, did you see the person that come, that put us in a? Uh, they posted us in a story. You reposted it, talking about chickens. Oh, bro. dude, I had a nightmare last night about twelve chickens. And oh the next, yeah. The next video was like these chickens hold running. On. Hold on. What? What you hearing? What you hearing? Once again, we can't use this music due to copyright so just imagine these chickens running to dmx I we like did a him. shout out to that he guy took if you some can badass see, photos he did if you can Vancouver. see it we'll, we'll have to put it up because it's hilarious but i was uh, laughing my ass off at while you thing. find it i'll tell the chicken story yeah. quickly uh when i was little i had these chickens called americanas and they laid like this greenish blue egg i thought it was so cool the chickens that I have only lay like different shades of brown and white eggs. So we have like our eggs in like a carousel. So you get to like see all the colors, which I think is just sick. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go get some Americanas. So I went, got two Americanas at Tractor Supply uh, or at DMB Supply. And then Dallas like, dude, I want silkies. Let's go to DMB. I think they have them there. We go there. There's no silkies, but they have these chickens called Easter Eggers. And they lay different shades of blue and green. And I was like, okay. Like, I got to get that. That's freaking sick. So, like, I'll take two of those. And then, like, well, you have to get four. Like, it's a minimum of four. And I was like, all right, well, (laughs) 
load them up. <laughs> so then I got that. So now I have that six chickens. Uh, we lost a soldier, so we're back down to five. And then Melissa, uh, Dallas's wife, she messaged me. She's like, hey, I'm getting Dallas a surprise. I found some silkies. I'm going to go buy some. And I was, she's like, do you want one? And I was like, no, I don't need any. She said they're, they're only black and white ones. And I was like, I already have a bunch of black and white chickens. I don't need another one. I was like, well, if they have another color, then get me that. They had another color. <laughs> <laughs> so she got me a silky. So I'm back to six. If you guys have never seen silkies, we'll put them up. But she got me a silky. It's kind of like this like grayish brown, black. I don't know what kind of color it is. Yeah. And then Dallas got an all black one. And then she got this chicken called a frizzle, <laughs> which is, it's like the crackhead of chickens. We're going to really put, though, we'll, really. we'll put a silky, we'll put all the chickens, we'll put an Americana there, and then we'll put Easter egg here, and then silkies, and then frizzle, which is, we got to get Zach to hold a frizzle, is what mm, I'm getting at. It's like, it's like Hey Hey off of Moana. <laughs> uh, There's crazy like, googly eye looking. I was thinking of that, the bird from Angry Birds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the crazy yeah, like that. I don't even know. Um, picture. Hey, our boy is uh, Jeff Duncan. Dunk, Shout out to that guy. PD, bro. Dude, it was so funny, though. That, that So that thing. The chicken thing, I hopefully it keeps getting bigger because, like, the good day thing, I think most people are related that to Jesse, and I want the chicken thing to be your thing. You know? Like, that's my thing, of yeah. all things. Like, chicken. I just want to be able it's to bring there, it up bro. all the I want to. Yeah, Jeff, I know. You got I, I just want to bring it up all the time so, like, people, like, are in on the inside joke. I, like, now, how cool it is to be part of inside jokes. Bro. Maybe I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't have a lot of inside jokes. <laughs> and now there that I feel like. There were a lot of like, inside jokes about you. Yeah, I know. There were. There definitely were. <laughs> we need to make T-shirts. So now we the got. Chicken. Like, this man. is, like, our crew. Like, all you guys and us. And, like, and we got, nothing, we got makes, inside jokes, bro. nothing makes my day more is when I'm doing, like, a meet and greet or someone and someone hits me with a good day. I'm just like, that's my crew. <laughs> so that's dope. my people right there. Yeah. So, like, that, that chicken thing's added to it because we're all just one part of one big inside joke. Not everyone knows it. Not everyone's cool to be a part of it. But Hey, people be making fun of me at the gym I coach at. They make fun of me. <laughs> Because I'm afraid of chickens. <laughs> I'm not afraid of chickens no more. For the record, I get the eggs. and Every I'll, day. Every day. I, every day I go get me, the eggs. Give, you got I, the eggs today? I'm like, nope. Eggs. <laughs> I'm out there getting them. There's hella eggs every day. Justin leaves them for me so I can go out there and participate. I throw the feed out. If I had to pick up a chicken, I would. I don't go out of my way to pick them no, up. No, no. But Hey, but you're there now. You're I'm, in the pen. I'm, you're yeah, getting the eggs. I'm there. I'm in there. I'm out there. I'm feeling good. Still at the gym, people... Did you touch a chicken today, Zach? Like, no, not today. Dude, Je but Jesse's coming around. Scared. He hated the good day thing. I'm like, Jesse, <laughs> really did. it's so good. I got the quote up on my wall. Because, like, Next obviously, the chicken on the wall. It, started, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it started as a joke, but, like, it's a good thing. Like, dude, it's a freaking good day. We're in the gym. We're working out. Things would be a lot worse. That's kind of what it started to mean to and me now. And we say it every day. Yeah, and like, it didn't hey, start that way. It's a good day, baby. It didn't start that way, but, like, dude, it's so many good vibes and memories when you talk about it's a good day that – that's kind of what it's turned into, so. It's a good day. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel that. That's why we're out here live, laugh, loving, baby. Hey, baby. Um, what time we at? How long we been? I feel like we've been doing this for a while. Hour and two minutes. Oh, my God. Dude, we just we beat killed it. it. That is a new record for longest podcast, isn't it? No, nah, we've been up there before. Yeah, you've been up here before. Uh, yeah. Dang it. Never mind. Dallas will come Anyways, down to 40. I got, I got <laughs> something for, uh, to end on. It's like not this. Neil deGrasse Tyson, but it's something that I think. Anyways, I'm just gonna. I'll, I'll just put it out there. Yeah, just spit it out. I'm just gonna spit it out. I'm just gonna spit it out. Yeah, go ahead and just send me whatever you got. Just now, spit so it I'll out, bro. Ask for it later. Hey, listen, just, just listen, just say what you need to say. Get it done. I always okay. send Justin like a list of things I need. Okay, like, I need this, this, and Hold this. Hold on, I do need to send you something. What's, on. what's bigger, like Daddy? Chill. <laughs> point nine 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 nine, like infinitely. Uh huh. Or one, like are those, like which one's bigger? Bro, one. They're the same. Stop playing with me, cause it rounds up. No. Okay. They said, this is the video. I'll play it right now. Well, here's a follow-up to yesterday's video that more formally shows why 0.9999999 repeating is exactly equal to one. Again, it's not just about one. It's not approximately one. It's not almost one. But those two numbers are exactly one and the same number. Watch this. We're going to call that number S. Let's say S is 0.99999 repeating, right? What happens when you multiply a number by 10? Well, if you take a decimal and multiply it by 10, 
and the shortcut is just move that one one notch over to the right, the decimal point. So 10 S's is gonna be 9.99999 repeating, right? I mean, that makes sense. So if we do this, right, we have those two equations there, and what we're gonna do is we're going to switch them around a little bit. Watch this. I'm gonna take this and subtract. Watch this. What's 10 S's minus 1S give us? Doesn't that give us 9S's on the left side? And if I subtract the left sides of both those equations, I should be able to subtract the right sides and have that equation still balance out as well. So what's 9.9999 repeating minus 0.9999 repeating? Won't those infinitely many nines go away and we left with nine minus zero, which is nine. Wait a minute, nine times what number is nine? If we divide both sides by nine here, what do we get? <gasps> we get S being one, do we not? So that number 0 0.999 repeating, which we called S, right? And the number one are exactly the same number. So I don't know if that is how math Dude, look in the comments. Look in the comments. What are no, that, dude, seven? No, dude. I looked, Repeating? No, I looked at it because they said it's infinite. Like if there was a set number of nines, it would you would always have like another point nine. Okay. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like since it's infinite, they go on forever. Like you can't like it doesn't like end. But if it was a number where like it was like millions of point nine eventually it does end so you can you can't do that oh is is kind of what i saw someone in the comments say i had I, I, some of the comments were saying that like it's just completely wrong you can't do that whereas others were saying that like it's i think i don't know if i yeah but couldn't you do that with like 0.7 infinite or or like 7.9999999 is the same as 8 so you're saying like 0.7777 and then you times it by 10 and then you would get 7.77777 uh -huh. and yeah. then delete it. But then you're saying, so then it'd be 7s is equal to 7, and then you divide it, so s is equal to 1. That's what I'm saying. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. I'd say I wasn't <laughs> sure if it was true, but I was, like, watching it, and it had me thinking. I mean, it, I don't know. That's just my question. Yeah, I, 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 don't I know. know. I'm, I'm interested. In, I wonder how... In our community, if anybody's smart, we need Nigel yeah, Noriega. I, well, baby. <laughs> for real, we need hey, Nigel, Nigel Noriega. Big Nigel man. Noriega. But some, hey, let's see a mathematician in the comments. Yeah, Come if on, anybody is it. good or knows the answer to that, because we've had some, we've proven that we're not the smartest <laughs> on here before. We're fit. We're fit. We're fit. But the fit is sometimes right. I feel like I'm, I'm thinking we way too fit. hard about things, which I think this might be one of them because I could obviously totally see like what your point. I feel like kind of disproves it. I, but comment sections are so deceiving on Instagram and stuff. It's like the you don't know who's trolling, who's not. I feel like Justin has a, a solid community that has integrity and is interested in participating in fun activities like figuring out whether or not the math problem is correct or incorrect debating no but conversing hell yeah that's a tough one i like that bro i don't know i don't know if it's true or not but if it is that's really weird i feel like it just can't be true because like if you just think about it simply like it was the what was the other one that we did like if you make eight hundred dollars, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, if you yeah. look at it simply, it's just like it's a simple it's answer. Like, bro, you're stupid for even considering that. Where no, like no, I think no. this is it. I think it's just stupid. Like look at it simple. One cannot equal point nine nine nine. Like it just can't. Bro, here's what I think. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, peace out. We yeah. got three weeks until quarterfinal or till semifinals. Uh, chilling this week. Turner gets back next weekend. Adam Neifer and the crew is back out the weekend before semis to do our last training camp prep. Yeah, baby. The next week's semis. So stay tuned. A lot of fun things coming. The workouts are starting to get more fun. We're busting up the handstand walk ramp, doing all these crazy things. Stay tuned. I'm pumped. Zach's pumped. Dallas is pumped. Live, laugh, love him, baby. Live, laugh, love him. Peace out.